I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up and let me stand, by faith on Hey everyone, it's good to see you back again, or good to have you back with us. I keep making a mistake every time I say that. I don't see you, you see me. If I could look right into that little hole right there, if I look really close, maybe I would be able to see you. But I do want to welcome you uh, being with us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your words of encouragement. I tell you that every week because you are just wonderful people. And it's just a privilege of being able to be here with you. We are going to be taking a look at a passage of Scripture in Genesis chapter 1 uh, this week. But before we do that, I wanted to, uh, wanted to give you a couple of announcements. And I'll, then I wanted to read the prayer for the week. The announcements are this. On Mondays at 10 a.m. in the Bistro Dining Room, that is the dining room right across the hall, from the marketing office in the Palm View building. On Monday morning, we have a grief support group at 10 a.m. And then on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. in the same room, the Bistro Dining, we have a Bible study. And then on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., we have an Alzheimer's dementia support group that meets in the same room. We would love to encourage you to come. We'd love to invite you to be there for that. And then Wednesday afternoons, for those of you that are able, we do have chapel in person in the Tides Gallery B. That's the smaller room of our new multipurpose room. And would love to have you come down there. That is 2.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday afternoons. And then, of course, since you are watching this, you know that we're doing a video. 
and the video is posted Wednesday afternoons at 2.30 and then again Sunday evening at 6.30. So we try to have a lot of information for you. Go on to My W Life under the spiritual tab. You'll see a lot of really good material, good resources, things that will inspire you and encourage you. And I had a lot of fun putting that stuff together and uh, making it there, making it available for you there. So take advantage of it. Use it. Tell your friends about it. Come out to these activities, the, the dementia group, the Bible study, the grief support group, whatever may meet your need, chapel, bring somebody with you. Say, well, I don't want to be the only one there. Bring a friend. <laughs> we have more than enough room. So come down and be a part of it. Now, our prayer today is sent to us by Roger Reimer. He is a resident at Westminster Baldwin Park, and he writes this prayer for us. <clears throat> Almighty Father, O God of righteousness and mercy, we bow before you in awe and wonder while lifting up our hearts to you in praise and adoration. Be gracious to us, and hear the prayer of our community. We are your people. We are tired and weakened, aging and sickened and often fearful. You have gathered us together, shepherded by your chosen caring staff members. We live in harmony, focused on your presence, supporting and encourage one another, always aware of the nearness of joining you in eternal peace. O oh Lord, our bodies are tired and weary. We use this time to invigorate ourselves and to allow you to invigorate us, re-energize our community. We pray that you will embrace all our communities of Westminster with your grace and steadfast love in this new year. Help us come together in fellowship, casting away hopelessness and loneliness as we celebrate your coming. Let the joy spread throughout our community like a wildfire, reigniting smoldering embers of faith, setting afire the passion to be near you. Use this time to renew struggling faith and to open the eyes and hearts of our residents who have not come to know of your grace and love. Amen. Wonderful prayer. Thank you so much, Roger, for providing that for us. Now, we're going to be looking, like I said, at a passage in Genesis chapter 1, and we're looking at the first five verses. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. I've titled this message, New Beginnings. New Beginnings, and you'll understand when the passage comes up on the screen in front of you. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, so if you have your Bible and you want to follow along in your own version, that's fine. Again, it's Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Here is what the text says for us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. God's word for us, as is recorded for our benefit, for our instruction, God's blessings upon it. Now, when our minds turn to the creation of all of heaven and earth and we ponder the immense space, time, objects, movement, we seem very small and insignificant, don't we? When we consider the expanse of the universe, we feel very, very small. Yet in all the wonder of creation, nothing compares to the new beginnings that can occur in the life of one who turns to God. We've just celebrated here recently a brand new beginning of a year. Brand new day 
brand new calendar. We are now in the year 2021. What excitement that brings and at the same time apprehension, some confusion, questioning, maybe some doubts, some apprehension. We have no idea what this year is going to hold. So what are we going to do with this new beginning? How are we going to respond? How are we going to live? And how are we going to focus our attention? These are all interesting questions that I'd like for us to consider for today. First of all, the presence of God can fill the emptiness. The passage says that the earth was empty and it was formless. It was a void in one translation, the way that it puts it. Void and darkness covered the deep. The earth was empty. It was as if it was a blank canvas and God was getting ready to strike his paintbrush and to paint his vision of what his creation was going to be. So with the earth being empty, I wonder, do we recognize that our lives can be empty as well? Now in the last few months, we have come to understand just how empty an apartment can feel how empty our lives can feel, how void, how formless it can feel. But you know what? We are in brighter days, better days ahead, brighter days ahead. God is going to do a new thing in our midst and in our life. And when the calendar flipped over to January 1, it should have piqued our interest and helped us to anticipate what this new year was going to be. So with our lives seemingly empty, I wonder what kind of creation or recreating does God want to do in our lives where we are right now? That's an interesting question, isn't it? He has plans and purposes for all of us, and he has plans and purposes in these times of void and quiet and silence and social distancing. He has a plan in all of that. When you consider all that he has and all that he's made, all that he's created, I mean, the whole expanse of the cosmos, God had you and I in mind in this. And he says, I have a plan for you as well, not just the world, but for you personally as well. So God's presence can fill the emptiness. The presence of God can bring about form and structure. God spoke all that is into existence. He spoke it and it happened. His thought translated into word, and his word made it come to pass. Our lives need guidelines and structure. God speaks about how things are going to be. God gives us guidance in what he wants to do in our life. Are we silent enough to hear him? Do we pause long enough to contemplate him? Do we tune our, ear, turn our, tune our ear into what's going on? Can we see the touch and peace and presence and in many cases the face of God? Can we believe and can we trust? So in the emptiness, God says, I want to give form and structure. I want to do something in your midst. I want to move upon you. And in the same way, God speaks his word to us. That's what we're studying right here, is his word. And through his word, he can speak new things into existence in our life. None of us 
are total free agents in everything that we say and do. There are consequences. We may be able to do it, but should we? How we act, how we react, God says, let me give you some guidance. Let me give you some structure. Thirdly, the presence of God dispels darkness and gives light. A world without light cannot sustain life. I was watching a documentary the other day on the a journey to the deep, I think was the title of it, and it talked about life on the ocean floor in the, in the deepest depths of the ocean. And it's amazing what can survive in absolute blackness how there's bioluminescence and those creatures are able to get around and live in such incredible darkness and at immense pressures. But folks, we don't live on the bottom of the ocean. We don't live in outer space. We live on this planet and we interact with other people. And we find that a life without God is in darkness. Our lives need a point of reference and faith. God stands ready to come alongside of us, to hear us, to fellowship with us. Without Him, we can be in a well-lit room, <laughs> and yet our lives are in darkness, and we're unable to see, and we're unable to navigate. It makes it difficult for us. But God, moving in our life, dispels darkness and gives light to the darkest corners, the darkest closets of our life. God is able to bring about a brightness and He chases darkness away. I always enjoy our Christmas Eve candlelight service because it it demonstrates the power of one candle in an absolutely dark sanctuary or room. How one small candle can dispel so much darkness. You see, light is never overcome by darkness. You cannot put out a candle by overwhelming it with darkness. But one small light dispels the darkness in the room. Fourthly, the presence of God is the essence of all that is good. It says the Spirit of God moved across the expanse and the emptiness. God's Spirit moved across the expanse. The Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Hovering. Positioned in proximity, poised to interact, poised for creation to take place and for all that is to be spoken into being. The Spirit of God, you see, moves across our lives as well. Every day, at our Bible study this morning, we discussed the fact that the presence of God is an amazing thing in our life. How do, we, how do we navigate? The title of our Bible study is Waiting for God. When we're waiting for God, we have to be sensible and sensitive. Sensible in the way that we recognize that only God can move adequately in our life. And being sensitive enough to sense his movement, to see it with our eyes, to hear it with our ears, to sense it with our heart. So the Spirit of God moves in our lives every day. It's like tuning in a radio to a station. Once we recognize and realize that God is with us, all we need to do is pause and close our eyes and allow God to speak to our hearts and listen for His voice, sense His touch, sense His movement, 
and realize that in all things, God is good. Lastly, the presence of God makes every day new. Now, we're looking at a new year. I get that. We're looking at a new year. New Year's Day is over. It's already passed. And we say, well, we can't have a, another New Year's Day. No, but we can have a new day starting a new year. We count 365 days. That's a year's period of time. We recognize the calendar as starting on January 1 and ending December 31. But a year is 365 days. So therefore, every day can be the beginning of a new year. You may say, oh, I've, I've already messed this year up. Start again. Start again. Pick up those pieces. Gather all of that together. Give it to God and say, I am determined to make today a brand new day. And I'm going to learn to trust him one day at a time. Can you imagine what the first day must have been like at creation? I wonder what the air smelled like. I wonder how clear the atmosphere was. I wonder what the waters looked like. The colors of the flowers and trees and grass, plants, the newness of the animals. No one had ever lived it before. It was a gift. Can you imagine the very first day? You see, every day is newly created for us by the hand of God himself. And if we're willing to open our eyes, we can see that it's a beautiful, clear day. We can draw breath into our lungs. And we can recognize that that's the breath of life. We can place our hand on our chest and we can feel our heart beating. And we know that above all and in all, God has granted us life, granted us fellowship with him, and every day is new. We should then allow God to recreate us. Sometimes we could call it a remodel or a redo. If you're a golfer, you call it a mulligan. <laughs> Are we willing? to take a chance on God and to start a new day, to choose when we get up every morning to say, God, this is a brand new day. Thank you for the gift of life that you have given me. Now help me, oh God, help me to allow you to fill the emptiness, to give me that form and structure in my daily routine and events, dispel the darkness all around me and give light to my pathway. Help me to see your goodness in all things and help me to just let go of yesterday and to realize that today is a brand new day. We should allow him to restore us and move upon us and allow his light to shine and for the life to spring forth in us to those people around us. Only through Christ will we know life as God intended, because God created it. God gave it, and he gives it to us day after day until he calls us home. Amen. Amen. Let's close with our Westminster prayer, shall we? Creator God, we ask you to bless our Westminster community and all who live and work within it. May this place be filled with deep caring, welcoming hospitality, and dedicated respect. May all who visit here be greeted with warmth and kindness. May all who live here be graced with God and peace. 
May all who serve here do so in the spirit of Jesus, whose deep love and dedication to healing touched all he encountered. Amen. May God bless you for being with us. May God use you to be a bright spot in the lives that you come in contact with. Recognize that God is using you as his creation to touch those around you who are also his creation. May his love flow through you. May his spirit sustain you. And may his grace undergird you. God bless you. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine His comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. Jesus led me on.